everybody knows today's vehicles now are equipped with mass amounts of electronics, safety nannies, all kinds of sensors that can tell you what's wrong with your car. Welcome back to the channel everybody, Mark with Exotic Car Play Place and today everybody gets intimidated by all these sensors and electronics but you don't need to be intimidated and I'll tell you why. It's very easy to tap into your computer's brains, figure out what's going on and then make changes as needed. So today I'm going to demonstrate some of those abilities and not only that, I'm also going to show you, I picked up this great little VPeak OBD2 code reader. It's great, it's Bluetooth, it works awesome, it's amazing to plug in, you dial in with your phone and bingo, you're going. Now OBD2, what is that? That OBD2 is sort of a protocol, a communication protocol that was standardized to create standard codes so that all manufacturers more or less had to adhere to the same codes, faults, issues like that. So that all started in 1996 in the United States of America. Then in Canada, it evolved in around 98. Then it eventually spilled over to Europe and Australia and rest of the world. So that all came in years after. Now I'm going to explain step by step every one of these elements and why they're so important to you and why you need to understand what they are when you're tuning your car, when you're modifying your car, or if you're just troubleshooting a common problem. So the original design intent for the OBD2 input port really was for diagnostic, troubleshooting, fault codes, understanding what is wrong. When you get an engine light on the dash, it would give you that fault code. But now, in today's day and age, there's so many more capabilities to the OBD port, it's not just really about diagnostics. It actually gives you a set of eyes right into the brains and the heart of the operation in your car. It can give you a lot of great features, give you information in live stream what's going on with your car. It can do things, for example, like oxygen. It can detect what's going on in terms of your oxygen mixture. Well, that comes from your O2 sensors, and most cars have O2 sensors which are there essentially to do two functions. One of which is to regulate the fuel mixture going through your car because as it reads too much, too rich a fuel on the exhaust, it'll back off fueling on the intake. Too lean, it'll up the fueling. But also those oxygen sensors do other things too. Now often what you'll have is catalytic converters as part of the emission systems. And those O2 sensors are mounted usually on both sides of the catalytic converter to monitor whether there's an issue in the cat. Now the cat is there to scrub emissions, keep our air cleaner for everybody so we can breathe better, so we don't have excess amounts of pollution in the air. That's the intent of the catalytic converter and these O2 sensors can monitor for failure in the catalytic converters. Now by using one of these great little OBD2 dongles is really what people are calling them these days, these dongles, and you utilize that in conjunction with great many number of apps that are available on the market today, you can actually read a whole host of things. Some of them being the oxygen, for example, from your oxygen sensors. Another one can actually be engine speed, vehicle speed. It can spit all that information out to you. All of that stuff is logged within your ECU and transfers into different locations, whether it goes to your electronic speedometer, or tachometer, whatever. But those factors are always available to you. You can read that as well in live data just to do confirm whether there's an issue there. There's other factors like engine oil temp it can pick up as well. So you want to learn, is the car running too hot? It's not just about the coolant and the antifreeze. Remember, if you're tuning your car, engine oil temperature is very, very important. Because if you're running very hot in the bottom end and oil is breaking down because of excessive heat, you'd have to expect deterioration within the engine. So if you're tuning and you're pushing your car harder than you ever have, you definitely want to have a, a visibility on the engine oil temperature. If the temperature chronically is too high, you might have to consider putting in an engine oil cooler to bring those temps down. There's other factors like fuel trim. Fuel trim is designed to pick up the sensitivity of whether you're running too rich, too lean. Typically, if you're running numbers up to maybe less than 10%, you're fine. If you start running numbers in excess of 10%, usually means there's a problem. But it's very important to understand how much mixture and how lean the engine is actually running. Now it can read other things like exhaust gas temperature, EGTs. Very, very important in turbocharged vehicles and more specifically in turbo diesel vehicles, like in my X5 as well. So those types of turbo diesel vehicles, for example, rely on a very, very tight band, a tight tolerance, and there's not a lot of room for deviation for exhaust gas temperatures. As your EGTs rise, that usually indicates a few things. Heavy load, 
possibly too lean or more of a restriction on the intake. You're not getting enough air in there mixing with the diesel or you're also possibly not getting the flow out of the exhaust either. It could be just a restriction in airflow in or out of the engine creating too rich of a scenario. That richness in fuel creates elevated exhaust gas temperatures. Now when you have an EGT that's a higher than a normal spec, what can actually happen is it can start melting down your turbochargers. So it actually starts to melt the narrow, the thin part of the veins on your turbos. When that starts to melt down, that creates an unbalance in your turbos. That turbo can therefore take out the rest of the engine when those veins or blades start coming apart. As well, if you have too high of an exhaust gas temperature, that can start wreaking havoc on your engine itself. That can start melting, popping holes in pistons and valves, and really disintegrating the engine from the inside out. So it's extremely important that your EGTs are within a reasonable range. And so this is a great way to monitor that EGT with a device like this, as well as one of these simple little apps. Since we're talking about diesel engines, the DPF, the diesel particulate filter. Everybody knows they're a very sensitive subject. Those things are also designed to scrub carbon emissions from diesel engines. And as a result, you can actually watch and monitor your DPF temperatures. The temperatures are also important. If you get the high temperatures, that's telling you it's burning. It's burning the excess carbon. If you're not getting the temperatures needed, it won't burn, burn that excess carbon. And therefore, you know your DPF is not running efficiently. You can also do other things like balance rates. And one of my most favorite features that it can do as you guys know, we're tuning these cars, and so if you're a tuner, you're really gonna wanna know this feature, is boost pressure. If you're running a turbocharged car, for example, maybe you have a B58, or maybe you have an N54 like I have here, maybe you have an N55, which is the predecessor. They're all turbocharged cars. Maybe you have an M5. Maybe you have any one of those twin turbocharged V8 BMW engines or any turbocharged engine. It doesn't have to be BMW alone. This will work on virtually any car today that runs on the OBD2 protocol. And so you can monitor the boost pressure. And if you put in tunes, for example, like I have here, the JB4 tune, then you'll know you're able to verify what that boost pressure really is producing. Because number one, you want to know the boost pressure. It's very important you understand that you're not over pressurizing the engine. But as well, when you're running high boost, you want to make sure that all your other factors are lining up that you don't have issues in running too lean, that your boost pressure's in line, all your factors should be where you expect them to be. But another giveaway, so this is essentially measuring manifold pressure. So when you're measuring boost pressure, you're verifying the system seal essentially. Now it's not uncommon to know that these N54 engines suffer from what they call wastegate rattle. And there's other factors. What if you have your charge pipe that cracks? That's another issue that these engines have. So if you have a boost leak, and again, it's not, singly, it's not singling out the N54 engine because any car can suffer from a boost leak or a problem with reducing boost pressure, you are able to verify what that boost pressure actually is in live times. So you can mount your cell phone, run the app, and you can watch it in real time what sort of boost pressure you're matching up with. That way you know, A, I don't have a leak, and B, I am actually delivering the car, the boost pressure that the tune, like the JB4 or Burger tune, is promising. So if you saw that last pass, I accelerated hard in second gear and it gave me 73 kPa pressure and I converted that to PSI and that shows that I that my car produced about 10 and a half PSI of pressure, boost pressure. So 73 kPa to about 10 and a half PSI. This is the stock setup. I don't have the JB4 turned on. It's on bypass right now. So I actually pushed about 10 PSI of boost to the engine. So it is great technology being able to run through all these different features, giving you in real time what the car really wants to give you. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that quick walkthrough and more importantly, make sure you click on that link on the end screen here. That's going to take you to that next great video. Hope to catch you guys soon. See you then. Bye-bye.